About the week before I painted the study, I came to Malibu Bluffs Park just to check out how everything looks. All possible locations, views, and how everything works. Although I am familiar with this park, I like to know ahead of time what I might find at any particular time of year. It puts me in the right mindset and gives me ideas of what I might like to accomplish here. That is, what I would like to concentrate on. Realistic drawing, color studies, atmospheric effects, and so on. So when I arrived here to paint, I knew exactly where to set up my easel. I worried about nothing, and nothing was uncertain. I could relax, focus, and meditate on the scenery. My goal was to do a few color studies in search of various color combinations, be it subtle and delicate or bright and vibrant. I knew that the overcast morning and fog would surrender to sunshine, thus allowing me to complete a few small studies, each painted under different conditions. And so it was. As I was setting up, the sun was burning up the fog, but plenty of moisture hung in the air making my first scene hazy with some marine clouds trying to make up their mind whether they're staying or going. This gave me a chance to capture those fleeting colors of a part hazy, part sunny coastal vista. I started with evaluating the scene. Very quickly it became obvious that I need to take out or shorten the bluffs to accommodate my composition. I proceeded to moisten my linen panel with walnut oil. I applied dabs of cadmium yellow and vermilion mix to it, rubbing it down to more or less even finish. This not only makes the surface moist and welcoming to the brush strokes, but any parts that don't get touched by the brush would shine through as if the hazy sunshine itself got embedded in the paint. With the change to the bluff's length in mind, I started sketching out my composition. I left out the shrubs directly in front of me and started with a gentle sloping bluff. One of the advantages of painting on location is that you can leave something out or add something in if it improves your composition. By taking a few steps to the right or to the left, forward or backward, you can see what is behind an object that you're leaving out and sketch in the object behind it. In color studies, my emphasis is on the color harmony, not a realistic representation. Now, having said that, I never fully abandon realism in composition's design. For my composition in this study, I used the rule of thirds. I dedicated two thirds of it to the sky and the marine clouds. I sketched in the clouds as they were about to disappear. The main mass of clouds on the left counterbalanced the main land mass on the right. The sun was almost directly behind me, and the landscape in front of me was receiving an almost straight-on sunlight, with only a mild angle. So all the shadows were hardly there to see. In this case, this was a good thing, because it would allow me to better focus on the colors and values produced by the sun through the haze. I wouldn't need to resolve what shadows are doing with their colors and values on such a small canvas. I often like to start with the sky. I use cyan blue and white with a touch of cadmium yellow to warm it up and push my color a bit toward turquoise. I also went around the marine clouds as well as leaving some of my yellow canvas glow popping up between brush strokes.
Next, I mixed my clouds color and volume. I tested it to be sure I was close to what I needed here. And once I was sure, I quickly filled in the clouds. Capturing the color and value of clouds on location can be challenging because of the clouds constant movement. I like to use the same cyan color base as I did in the sky, but alter its hue with a little bit of vermilion. This makes my clouds just different enough in hue from the sky, but not so different that they would seem foreign to the sky. Mixing white, cyan and vermilion in various proportions can produce fresh and pleasing looking cloud grays when compared to this particular color of the sky. I also never use black to make my grays. I don't use black in my landscape painting at all. While working on the clouds, I played with colors and values a little bit. Clouds in the upper portion of my composition are closer to me in reality. Thus, the value is darker. Compared to that, the mid-cloud portion is lighter, and the lower clouds positioned right against the land mass are the lightest in value. This is known as atmospheric perspective. It is a way to capture the effect of distance and depth of a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. Next, I tested the color of the ocean. Again, I started with cyan blue and white base because the ocean reflects the sky. But also the ocean's constant movement means that many particles like mud and sea organisms are suspended in the water, changing its color and value. So I added a bit of Indian yellow to my base to accomplish that. The marine clouds in the sky would reflect in the ocean as well. So I used my clouds color to reflect that in my study. The value of the ocean compared to the sky is darker overall. In the foreground, it is the darkest. Farther away, it is lighter, but not lighter than the sky. This is our atmospheric perspective at work again. After that, I was ready to work on my land masses. I compared the values of the sky and ocean to the values of trees and shrubs on the bluffs. I mixed some basic values to represent the basic masses of greenery and put a few dabs on to see if I was close enough. I proceeded to fill it in. As I worked, I would stand back more often to compare values and colors to each other from a distance. In the beginning of this process, I would step back every so often. As I approached completion, I stepped back more and more often because it helped me see and compare my sky, ocean, and land as three whole masses of value, color, and shape as well as compare the details and variations of color value and shapes within those three. I started with darker values in the foreground and proceeded to capture the lighter shades of grasses and dry wild flowers. Although these are lighter shades of green, overall they have to be darker than the sky slightly lighter than most of the ocean, and much lighter than the values of trees and shrubs. To achieve these colors, I usually start with ultramarine blue and some white. I then push the hue toward gray by adding a bit of Persian red and sometimes a tad of Indian yellow. I use that as a base for my darker values of trees and shrubs. Not counting white, I don't mix more than three colors most of the time. This was one of the first things I learned when I started my art studies in Russia. Using three color combination at the start allows me, later in the painting, to alter my original color in three directions. More ultramarine to push it toward blue, more Persian red for redder and purpley browns and grays, more Indian yellow for a variety of subtle greens. At the same time, the original value is maintained overall, 
and the change of hue is subtle. It never hurts to go more colorful in the beginning. It is easier to dull down my starting colors if I feel it needs to be done. But it would be very hard to bring the color and vibrancy back to what started as gray and dull. Mixing just the right color and value on the palette and expecting it to be just right for a particular part of the painting can be challenging, takes time and a lot of experience. But because I am painting on plein air and am short on time, I use this as a shortcut toward achieving the color and value I need. If I were to paint a larger painting from the study in the studio, I would often mix my color to match the one in the study from the start. As I moved to work on more and more distant land masses, I lightened up my darkest values and darkened by just a bit the values of dry grasses. I also pushed all those colors closer to bluish gray to achieve the effect of haze in the atmospheric perspective. Now that most of my canvas is filled with my first guesses of colors and values, I moved to tune everything up. I added a bit more Indian yellow to my foreground trees and shrubs, giving them more of a green shade compared to all other colors in the study. I repeated the same effect on the distant greenery, only in a much softer and subtle way. As you may have noticed, throughout this color study, my brush strokes rather abstractly represent the basic shapes of all the objects in this landscape. The bluff in the foreground is covered by a variety of plants. Some of them are drying up. The color of that is leaning toward beige and ochre. Some of them are still green. Some have small yellow flowers also altering the hue of that area. Some of them are covered in clusters of seeds, turning more toward a red hue. All that variety introduces subtle changes to my colors and values as well. It also adds interest to the foreground where brighter colors and stronger contrasts help viewers sense the three-dimensionality of the scene. So not venturing too far out of my base colors and values, I proceeded to play with my hues as well as sharpening a few contrasts. After that, I could see that my clouds don't read as well as I would like them to. I decided to darken the value and lighten the value of the sky by a little bit. This gave me just enough definition to see the difference, but not so much that they became distinctly separate from the sky. My goal was to maintain their hazy, foggy look, but not to obscure it completely. Just a few more details here and there, a few more adjustments, and I'm pretty much finished. I often switch to using a palette knife near the end of my painting process. This allows me to do a few fine details in thicker layers of clean colors that don't bleed into previous layers. I can also scratch in a few details and lighten up the value which would be hard to do with the brush in such a small size painting. And here we go. An hour later, the little study is finished and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If you could let me know in the comments below what you think, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, please like this video, share, subscribe, and let me know if you would like to see any other kinds of videos on painting or drawing. By the time I finished this first little study, the scene had changed. It was much sunnier, most of the haze burned off, there were still some distant marine layer clouds way in back of the mountains but everything in front of me was nice and clear. You can see the moon that was setting and I decided to capture it in my next 5x7 study from the same location.
If you'd like to purchase one of my paintings, please visit my website, elenarocher.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at elena.roche to see how my paintings are created, in what locations I usually post all of those pictures. Thank you for watching, and remember, don't fail to see what you're looking at.